Hello everybody, this is Mike with Entertainment Gaming Daily, bringing you a tour of the fun house. To start off, we're going to come into, when we come into the house, we come in through the kitchen. So as we come in, the kitchen table is actually, uh, you flip it over, it becomes a poker table. The only thing that's video game related that happens to be in my kitchen is I have this really cool mushroom timer. And then, of course, I've got a few video game magnets. We have uh, Bowser, Mario, some Blizzard items there. And then inside the kitchen, I actually have a bookshelf that's kind of designated towards video game books. So we have the Hyrule Hysteria, Historia. Uh, Walkthrough books for a bunch of variety of different games. Uh, the Diablo books there, and then just books based on video games and stuff like that. The next shelf down, we actually have the treasure chest, which is all the walkthrough uh, books for all the different Zelda series. And then down here, we actually have when I went to school, so it's all my, my art software, video game software, and stuff like that. And then we come down to the free uh, GameStop magazines that we get. And that pretty much does it for the video game stuff in my kitchen. But I do have a ton of other knick-knack stuff in the kitchen. So I'll show that off before we actually get to the, the main event. Uh, I usually have a bunch of things where it's all everybody refers to it as being Applebee's. So the main thing that's in my kitchen is this really awesome 1968 Pepsi machine. We use this to put a lot of our alcohol in. Uh, depending if the job's really big, we sometimes put soda in there as well. I'm going to head over to the bathroom because I have one item in the bathroom that I think everybody would think would be pretty cool. And that would be a Super Shower Time Shower Curtain from Clintendo. I saw this thing on Think Geek. Ended up buying it just to find out that it ended up being discontinued very shortly after it came out. So I'm probably one of a few people that have that shower curtain. Uh, I buy a lot of uh, dirty, broken, busted video game stuff. So I use this TV to test everything and then I use my laptop to either look up how to's to fix and things like that. Just some stuff that I've collected over the years. Here we do like to play cards. So I have a bunch of different cards, poker chips, as well as a card shuffler. Um, I like to collect wine glasses and shot glasses, so just a bunch of different places I've gone to and just a bunch of different glassware that I've collected over the years. Besides cards, we also enjoy board games. So also in the kitchen, we have board games. The little felt uh, cylinder wraps or puzzles. Sometimes we get together and we start working on different puzzles, which I end up framing and then mounting up on the wall somewhere. So that's pretty much it for the kitchen. Nothing too crazy. Uh, there's the camera setup that I used to record the first video. Now moving on to the main attraction, the living room. So I got a nice little L-shaped couch we can fit a lot of people on. And then one of my pride and joys of my collection is this coffee table that I built. Ended up buying it off of Craigslist for about $30. It was a shadow box coffee table. Repainted it black, gray, and red to kind of mimic the NES. And then I put LED lights in it which are connected through the computer to light it up. But this is a nice little conversation piece for most people. Uh, most of the controllers are broken controllers that I've cut the cables on just so that it looked better inside the cabinet. Some of the other ones are ones that I physically use. 
And then for a lot of the other stuff, the second drawer holds all the other controllers. So we're going to start off with the real basic stuff for moving on to the actual collection. So above the door here, I actually have Tomb Raider and Fallout stuff. I have more Fallout and Tomb Raider stuff, but just kind of ran out of room. I love collecting different art styles for Mario. So these are just some of the, the things that I've collected. These two actually came from a Comic-Con, and then my friend's little brother, I think, used acrylic paint to paint this. It was nice enough to sell it to me. I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. I am a huge Blizzard fan. Got to go to BlizzCon 10, which was actually the 25th anniversary for Diablo. Uh, a lot of this stuff came from there. But I have the collector's edition of Diablo for both of the different sets. Some pop vinyls of Diablo. The glassware came from BlizzCon. Uh, we have our World of Warcraft stuff. The Stein came from BlizzCon. I am a huge Murloc fan. If they were real, I'd make sure I have one as a pet. The Health and Mana Salt and Pepper Shakers I actually made. There's my badge off to the right from BlizzCon. Then on the other side, we have Overwatch. Love Overwatch. So I have all the pop vinyls. Uh, missing a few of the, the limited editions, but just having the core people, I do have those. And then my end table kind of holds the keyboard and everything for when I get on the computer on the TVs. I use my iPad for uh, loadouts for Destiny. And actually hidden is just another seat. So if somebody wants to sit down, they can sit there. So we get a little editor, extra added seat for people. Slide that back. Now this is where the awesome stuff begins. So we're going to start off with some of the older Nintendo stuff. We got the Power Glove, Rob the Robot. We have the Game Boy Original, Game Boy Color, and one of the squids from Splatoon. Then we kind of break it down to the VR. So now we have the PlayStation VR. Uh, I have a Google XL, so then that's uh, the little gray thing in the back is for the Google to make it uh, VR. And then, of course, the Virtual Boy. Right below that is all my Nintendo stuff that are in boxes. Everything's listed in order, so we have my one Switch game. Then it goes down into... Wii U, Wii, GameCube, down the Nintendo 64, Super NES, and then finally to NES. Of course with the, the fish caster for the Dreamcast as well. Uh, anything that was done in carts are on a completely different shelf. This, These shelves are just designated for stuff that are in boxes. So I'm going to do a panoramic view of just kind of the setup. So we have, this is just the way the living room set up on the one wall. So I'm just going to kind of give you a, a, a quick, and then I'll go through and just kind of show you everything all at once. So this over here is my designated Xbox shelf. So on top of it we have the PC that I built, the Blue Yeti mic that I use for when I'm broadcasting through my Xbox. Everything just like the Nintendo was set up, so all the Xbox One come first, then it comes down the 360. Which there is a hundred and some odd 360 games, so bear with me for a second. And then eventually coming down to just the last few Xbox original games. I have a pair of gunners that I use, depending on how long I play. Kind of helps with eye strain a little bit, especially playing in the dark. Um, ended up getting the Destiny edition that came with the Ghost. And then if people even remember this, the actual dial-up box for the original Xbox to get online and play live. 
then after that I enjoy collecting different editions of the controllers so we have the burnt orange, the lunar white, the day one edition, modern warfare or advanced warfare sorry about that, Titanfall and then Gears of War. So moving on to the right side this is more designated to PlayStation. Now there's some Genesis stuff that's on here as well but we have our God of War Pop Vinyls, the 20th Anniversary Controller, the Tail Series Collector's Editions, God of War, Assassin's Creed, Uncharted 4, stuff like that. And then of course we come back around to what I showed you in the beginning. And then on the side we have all the carts that I just don't have boxes for. Uh, I am definitely looking into getting boxes for this, but it starts with Nintendo and slowly gets down to Sega. So now moving on to the PlayStation part. So same thing as all the other ones, you start off with the current gen PS4, breaking on the PlayStation 3, and we get into PlayStation 2. You can see some of them haven't been open uh, just because I ended up getting different editions. I've played the games. Like, I'm not a fan of these red ones, which are the after they sell so many editions or whatever. I definitely like having the original black labels instead of the greatest hit labels. There's some Vita games. Get into PlayStation 1. Down to the Genesis in the box. Sega, my, my one lonely Sega CD game, and then obviously Sega Saturn. Now on this side, we don't have controllers, but we have the Wii U, the Switch, the actual orange from Japan, PlayStation Vita, which uh, is not regional locked, so I can play anything that I want with it, and then the Pearl Edition PSP. We cruise on over to the Kinect, my PlayStation Pro, the PlayStation camera, 4K Blu-ray player, and then the Xbox 360 Vision Cam, kind of hiding off there in the back. Really don't use that much more nowadays. So, that's it for the top. Now we're going to break it down to the bottom side here. Don't mind my squeaky floor if it goes through on the volume. So, we have... The Model 1 Genesis with the compact disc drive CD and the 32X. Right below that is the Xbox One. Below that is the Sega Saturn. Cruising on over to the Halo Edition original Xbox. To the Dreamcast. And then we just have the sub and a speaker with the Xbox Elite 360 the Xbox 360 HD DVD drive, PlayStation 3, and then down here is just where I kind of have the Atari 2600 games hidden. Now I'm going to get up and roll on over to the other side. Now over here, we've got the Genesis, the wireless router, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 1, the receiver, uh, switch panel, the Atari 2600, uh, Dreamcast games, we've got the Super NES, the NES, GameCube, PSP games, and then the Wii U uh, actual hardware is down there. And that pretty much brings it to, you know, this is the living room. But then we're not finished. There's still more. So from the living room, we cruise on over to the next room, which we have my pool table. I like to host pool tournaments. And we're going to start from one end and creep our way on to the other. So we're going to step back, kind of do an overview, then we'll get close and see everything else. 
So this is one half of this room. So now we're going to cruise up. Over here we have the Sonic Mania statue, the Rocket League plush ball, some more Mario artwork with the Battletoads belt buckle. Now I know a lot of people ask, you know, all the time if we watch anime. Of course we do. People always ask, what do we watch? So here, now you can actually see what I've purchased and what kind of anime that I watch or thought was good enough to buy to watch. Obviously I'm a member of Funimation, so I watch a lot more than this. And it's cut down the cost because I'm not buying anime all the time. I can just watch it off of there. So there's the anime. And I'm not going to do this with all my movies. I just know the anime was a hot topic. So I wanted to give everybody a, a show on that. Then moving over here, we got the Pitfall Canteen, as well as the Mass Effect Light. We got Commodore 64. I'm missing the monitor, but I have the printer, the floppy drive, the cassette drive, a ton of games, and then in the box, the actual keyboard. Moving on to a Destiny, Destiny Scarf. And one of my more favorite items, I picked this up, Walmart was throwing it out. It was actually a poster holder. Instead of wasting wall space, you can just throw all your posters in here and leave it up to people, you know, when they want to look at it or what they want to look at. So you can just flip through it and then people can see all your posters. It doesn't take up a lot of space. So you can use your wall space for shelves to put more stuff on or just whatever. And I know you can find these. People just throw these things out. Once upon a time, I was a huge, huge Call of Duty fan. So I have to have a shelf that is designated just for that. So I have the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 Edition Xbox 360. Uh, got it off of someone else. It was already out of the package. So I figured, what the hell, might as well just display it. You get your little backpack, Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Uh, this came with the Collector's Edition. The patch I think I picked up somewhere else. Uh, the two things in the back I got at like uh, the little county fair. And I went out and got these mannequins whenever I got these beanies in this hat. I'm thinking about actually uh, painting them up to look like soldiers with like the, the urban camo green and black uh, face paint. The Call of Duty Collector's Edition with the RCXD, an iPad case, a uh, little Black Ops flag, the Call of Duty 2 helicopter, which came in the Care Package Edition, which there is the Care Package, and then I got the Call of Duty Ghost uh, cardboard thing from GameStop. Then, this thing is really cool. So these pedals go with this so this and this belong to a game called steel battalion steel battalion was for the original xbox and it's a mech game so you're looking in first person view of a mech and every one of these buttons on the controller is functional so if you end up getting a fire you have to use the fire extinguisher if you want to do if you get mud on the, the windshield, you got to use washing. I mean, everything has a purpose on this. So when you start, you got to prime stuff. You have gears. It's crazy. But I'll have to do a video so you guys can see this thing in action. Because it is fun. Graphics are a little rough. And again, like I said, I'm not going to show all my movies. This is actually designated just to horror. I usually don't watch these until October. Me and a bunch of friends will binge watch all this stuff. So then backing out, this television is one of the, the more sought after TVs, the Sony Trinitron. I have in storage the Sony Trinitron Wega, which is even better. But I end up picking this thing up because my TVs don't work with any of the light guns. So the purpose of this was so we could play Duck Hunt, use the Super Scope for the Super NES. Uh, one of the things... I thought was kind of cool that I found out in the wild was the JVC XI. Now the XI 
plays Genesis and Sega CD games. So it was just kind of a, a weird oddity that another company wanted to come in and make a system that worked for another system's games. Now over here we actually have the Sega Sports Edition Dreamcast and then another Genesis which has the DVD ROM tray Sega CD drive style and then another 32X. Now I do like Americanized cartoons so we will show these off. Not going to get too crazy with it but as you can see I just I love cartoons in general. Anime. Yeah cartoons or anime. So then right above this we have a plug and play series which is like Genesis, a few Atari games and then a Pac-Man game. This is real nice for when your friends bring their kids over. You can plug it in, let them play with it. They can't really break a system. They're just going to break these little cheap things. Another thing that was really cool from Walmart was these uh, arcade cabinets. They didn't really cost that much but I love that they're actually colored. They have sound but they're just really cool. Uh, they had a couple other ones, but they weren't colored, so I didn't buy those. But I thought the Qbert thing was cool to go with the pop vinyl. Then we got our Space Invaders over here. And then just some random pillow I picked up from, I'd like to say, Target. So now we're at the halfway mark. Now we're going to creep upwards. So on this half, we have a bunch of Amiibos. I have them all except for I think three and I'm only displaying about three quarters of what I actually have because I don't have any room to display the others. Now I'm going to give you the view of the other half of the room from a distance and then we'll creep up on and check everything else over there. So now there's the other half of the Amiibos, there's the other half of the room. So we'll get up here, scope out the Mebos again, and then work our way down. Now besides video game stuff, I'm a huge fan of a lot of the, the stuff that I grew up on. Huge fan of Stallone. Big Trouble in Little Chinatown, awesome movie, Star Wars, Aliens. Uh, I, the license plate gamer is actually off of my vehicle. Enjoyed Back to the Future, got some license plates from it, got the pop vinyls. Actually had the hoverboard up there. Ghostbusters was a huge thing from my childhood. So I ended up getting a few things from that as well. Like I said, not going to get too crazy with... The DVDs. There's a couple sections I'll discuss, but other than that, this is kind of how the DVDs are set up with stuff in between them. So we'll just go through the, the actual video game collector stuff and not so much the DVDs. Now, a lot of this I've actually gotten from Loot Crate. And some of the stuff, I mean, yeah, I bought, you know, while I was out and about. But a lot of it here recently has came from Loot Crate. As soon as they switched over to gaming, I've been able to get a lot of stuff. Gears of War is one of my favorite series, so it gets its own little designated, designated shelf with its stuff. I also love Pac-Man, so he kind of has his own little deal as well. And then just some random stuff. There's some more Tomb Raider. Like I said, I ran a room in the other room, so I started putting a few things over here. We'll move our way up. We've got a little Mega Man designated shelf. And then down here, we kind of have Mario anything. We got Uno, Checkers, Yahtzee, Memory. And then over here, Cartoons from my childhood. Earthworm Jim, Mega Man, Zelda, Captain N, and then the Mario, different Mario series. Now besides that, they also made a bunch of live action video game stuff. And I know a lot, of, a lot of people don't know what all of them are. But I pretty much have them all. 
So down here, this is kind of the, the list of what I have live action. There is a few animated in here as well, but these are all movies based off of video games. I think there's one or two that are just video game related, like Grandma's Boy and Joysticks aren't off of actual game, but they're just about video games. And if nobody's seen Stay Alive, I definitely recommend it. It's about how people die in games, die in real life. Pretty awesome movie. I'm also, as you can see from the Hulk and the Deadpool thing, uh, a comic book fan. So, we have a little few items with that. I've got the, the animated DC comic movies. This is probably something a lot of people haven't seen. An actual Sega calculator. Now this thing was really cool. It had infrared where you could actually text other people that had this item through the infrared. So I mean it was kind of a, a, a neat little thing but nobody I knew had one so it wasn't like I could use it. Now speaking of comics, most people don't know there's a ton of live action comic books, superhero, graphic novel movies. These three rows right here are everything that I've found so far based off that. So if you're kind of wondering what I watch, I definitely try watching, like I said, anything comic book related, good or bad, I feel like it still deserves whatever. I just so happened to see that gamer was there. That needs to go over to the other side. But all these movies are somehow one of those graphic superhero or comic book based movies. And maybe by showing you this, there might be something in here that you never heard of. I definitely think if you see something here that might look interesting, give it a shot. Because a lot of these rarities are some of the better ones that I actually enjoy over the mainstream. Now, we've got a little light up ghost from Pac-Man, some Atari stuff, a sealed copy of Dig Dug. We got some quiz whizzes over here. Automobiles was a big thing in my childhood, so was Star Wars. Jaguar games. And then you move up. These are actually soundtracks from the collector's editions in the CD holders. And then I was able to collect the Hot Wheels. They had an Atari set, which is on the right, and then an actual Mario set, which is kind of creeping up there to the left. And then you can't have Nintendo without Tetris. Tetris was a huge Game Boy thing for me. I remember playing the original Game Boy out in the out for recess and playing Tetris. So we got Tetris pillows, stickers, we got Jenga, ice trays, puzzles, an actual Tetris light. And if you actually take the the stuff off they actually turn the lights off. So I thought that was kind of neat. Uh, what else we got? We got Tetris tape. I think there's like, uh, I think those two there might be uh, like paper clips and maybe markers or something. Uh, whenever the Wii Motes, they came out with different people. I made sure to grab those all. Just some Mario pillows I got off of. I think it was eBay or Etsy or something like that. I know the, the colors are weird. That's what makes them unique, I guess. I even have Mario spaghetti. I live in a town of 3,500 people, and this was in our grocery store. I could not believe it. Some Mario Christmas items. I just, I would love to have a video game tree. So I've been trying to collect some Christmas stuff. And then I also have a little Donkey Kong section there. Donkey Kong Jenga. Got an old uh, 1989 puzzle. Got the 30th edition banner. Kind of explains the, the history of Mario. And I kid you not, these are my folders from when I went to grade school. 
So this is something cool that I didn't tear up, luckily, as a kid. Because, I mean, back then you never know you're going to be, like, this dedicated to gaming. So it's cool that I found those. Uh, ended up buying the Link offline. Like I said, I like to have unique stuff that are one-off that people have made. And this is kind of the, the Zelda Metroid shelf here. You get Zelda Yahtzee, the Wiimote from the Skyward Sword Limited Edition. And you get your little uh, Metroid stuff over here. And then I have some more Super Mario Hot Wheels. And that's pretty much it for the video game stuff here. Now besides the video game stuff in this room, this is also my office. So when I'm doing my business stuff, I actually work from from inside right here. The nice thing about it is for some reason there's a window and I love it because if I'm sitting here working, I can actually look through and watch TV. So I think that's pretty awesome that I can turn the TV a little bit and actually watch whatever. So I mean that's pretty much it. You know, a little in and out of my house. You know, kind of walking back through. But if I'm not working, this is usually what I'm doing. And if I'm not streaming, then I'm doing something that I can't really stream. So, like I said, this is kind of the, the in and out of my house. I'm glad that you guys could join me for a little tour of it. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, comment below with, you know, any questions. If you want to know about something that's in my collection, where I got it, where you can get it. Uh, but other than that, I hope you guys had fun. I'll talk to you later. This is Mike from EGD, signing off.